bump will come on my arm in a minute. Not come on my arm. That'll be messy. Hello. It's Alex. <laughs> and I'm in my hallway shaking a can. Or what did you think I was doing? Um, <laughs> today is my day off. And uh, Raimi has gone down to the other unit where Betty is. And he's gone to tidy up some of the parts that are down there. I was going to go with him, but I decided to stay here because I'm determined to get Mr. Jenkins, my Rover P6, back on the road as soon as possible. So I'm going out there to do lots of work on him, hopefully. And I say hopefully, weather depending and everything. But um, yes, I've made a start. It is, what time is it now? Oh, 11 o'clock. Um, I've got some VHT red paint. I didn't actually know that it's matte red, but there you go, I should read the can, shouldn't I? Um, and what I'm spraying is this outside. Here we are. This is my engine side plate. So this originally would have been uh, like a zinc plating or anodized or something. So it had a goldy color to it. But back in the day, when I was a lot younger, I thought, you know, I want to I wanna paint this panel purple. Um, so I sanded it all down and I painted it with hammerite purple. But when you, or when I done the bolts all up, it sort of stressed the hammerite, like cracked it, I suppose. And so over the time, the water has got in um, because the sealant leaked as well. The water's got in and it's it's ruined you know it's gone a bit rusty the paint's all flaked off you know it's got hot because this probably gets about like 90 to 100 degrees probably um yeah and all the hammer was coming off so i had to make a decision i was either going to get this blasted and then sent off to get reanodized or i've decided now to paint it with um heat proof paint so I bought that red uh, matte spray, so it's going to go red now. Um, I've gone around the edges because this was all starting to go rusty, so I've had to wire brush all that down. And I've just put it there because I, I don't want to cover the thing in the paint, because if it does decide to flake off for whatever reason, it's going to flake off in my cooling system. So I've just gone for the edge, just to protect the edge where the gasket and the sealant's going to go. I'm going to mask off the um, nuts because I don't really want to take them out because then that disturbs the seal because they didn't leak. So I'll, I'll mask these up and I'm going to spray that red today. Uh, and then that'll be ready to go back on the car another day. Probably not today because the paint needs to go off. Right, let's go and finish shaking that can. <sighs> Sorry, I've just had to have an argument with my cat because he wouldn't move from where I wanted to spray. So he's staying there and um, he's not even looking at me. And I've moved to this little stall here. So with this exhaust stuff, you don't have to use primer. Um, oil petrol resistant protects up to 300 degrees. It's for manifolds and exhausts, but this gets really hot. I could have used engine enamel paint but the, the thing with the enamel paint, I was worried is when I did the bolts up, I was worried the enamel was going to crack. Whereas I think this is a little bit sort of softer. So hopefully it doesn't crack. Um, but yeah, what you do with it, you put a thin, a thin mist over and that's the primer. And then you just do one thick coat of this. So here we go. Go around the edges first. There we are. Now it looks 
bright red at the moment but it will go a little bit darker like that because it's, it's going to go matte but that I think is good coverage that's what it wanted he wants one sort of thick coat of it on there so you don't have to put any more coats of this stuff on and then it says here on the can <laughs> curing here we are allow it to dry for 10 hours curing can be carried out by the operating heat generated by the engine or you can bake it in the oven <laughs> which I have done before with some brake calipers I just uh, you, you build the temperature up gradually so yeah <laughs> I might put it in the oven that means I can fit it today but I'm going to just let it dry naturally for a bit now. And uh, that blimmin' cat. Here we are, back at the car. <laughs> Sorry, cheesy. Uh, the reason I've painted that side panel uh, red is because a lot of the things on the engine are purple, as was the side plane. Um, but I have got red top of the dipstick, red brake fluid cap red wires and red bits of the fan so I thought that red down there tucked away you're not really going to see it that will sort of contrast it all it was um, black red silver or blue they had in the shop or I think fluorescent yellow or something um, so I decided red you know it goes you know let me tap it clear its sign and things like that I've uh, cleaned it all out. I mean, this this panel was off probably probably about ten years ago, um, and it was full. It was absolutely full of silt. But this time, there's hardly anything really, um, because obviously it's only been ten years worth of silt to build up. So I cleaned it mostly yesterday. There's still a few bits in there it was dark <laughs> I scraped off the old gasket and sealant and I just got to sand that down now so it's nice and clean um, yeah and then that plate can go on this is the stuff I bought Supra black gasket maker maximum oil resistant temperature up to 350 Celsius um, it just seems like you know, it'll be good. I don't know if it'll be good. But they certainly uh, made it sound good on the internet. So if it's not good, and you're telling me it's not good, um, it's probably too late, because I would have already done it by the time I've edited this video. <laughs> so job for today is... Well, there's quite a few jobs today, and I've got the day to myself, which is cool. So I reckon bumper off valance out the way because I've got a new or replacement valance in the body shop because this one is a little bit crusty and it is bent under there so bumper off valance off then I want to get this out which might be hard because it looks a bit crusty and I want to think about whether I want to get new pipes made I'm not sure but the reason I'm changing this cooler is because of this pipe here. It looks awful. It looks like it's ready to, to give way. <laughs> so I've got a new old stock one of these I was lucky to pick up years ago. So I'm going to replace this. And it does look a bit awkward, but I'm going to try and replace this. I want to get the headlights out and just clean up the headlight surrounds. They don't look rotten or anything, which is nice, but I'll just give them a little freshen up. And I've got some nice matching headlamps because at the moment I've got a Unipart, I've got Lucas, that's a matching Lucas. But then I've got this one here that isn't branded. So I want all the headlights to be sort of matching. I'm a bit weird like that. I like things to match. So I've got a load of headlights in the back of the garage. They're just sealed bean. They're, they're, they've been good enough all these years. I'm happy with them. Um, yeah, just tidy up the front panel. Hopefully there's no rot under this valance. But if there is, I shall get the welder out. I'm just laying down on the job. You know how it is. Here, come down, come down here. So you can see my valance. 
and it's bent because Lyndon jacked it up on here and it was oily years ago I get rid of that and uh, the jack slipped and it punched my valance which is very annoying um, but I've got a early valance to go on this shark's tooth one so it won't have this sort of chin to it and I'm quite looking forward to fitting that I know it's wrong for the car but so is the colour <laughs> so we've got um, a bolt here each corner we've got two nuts and bolts there and two obviously down there to come off um, if we take the middle ones off first let me get in there and have a look yeah if we take the middle ones off first we can get rid of these under riders and number plate uh, what's going on there I mean, look at that. What's that doing in there? There's a screw in there. Or something. That's really strange. Why is that there? <laughs> oh, okay. That's weird. I wonder where the number plate's been. How strange. Sorry, I'm discovering things. Um, yeah, let's get these off. We can undo these and get this whole bumper out the way and then this I think is there anything holding that on or is it just hooked over oh no we've got some screws to undo that's it screws to undo just got to take off these two bolts I might have a bumper come on my arm in a minute not come on my arm that would be messy let's see oh that one. On the other side. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. There we go. I remember buying these uh, under riders. They were new old stock. But what on earth? You know what this is? I can tell you what this is. This is me, a younger me, getting annoyed with the number plate rattling. And I've shoved a raw plug in there. Why did I do that? <laughs> Why did I put a roll plug in there? And this, what is that? God knows. Well, that's better. Probably rattle now and I'll be annoyed. Yes, how far do I go with the restoration? Mm, I really should take the number plate off and tidy this back plate up, shouldn't I? Hey, needs a quick wire brush down, a bit hammering. Be as good as new then. Hmm. Right, well, not just yet. We'll put that over there. Let's get this bumper off. This jack's under here, just ever so slightly supporting the engine because I've got one of the engine mounts off, haven't I? Just in case you think, why well, she got that jack in the way? I just took the handle out of the way. Um, so I've undone the bolts either side and then what I've done I've take as I've took one out I then just slotted it under here just to keep the bumper up so all I've got to do now is, is support it and unslot the bolts uh, and it should come off then that's that that's that so now I mean, I'm lucky, really, that this probably has only been on about 10 years. So when I fitted it, I wax oiled it underneath, so it's immaculate. You know, everything you can see there is just wax. And uh, I use grease on all the bolts, so it come undone easy. So if you're going to do this job, don't expect them to come undone easy. 
um, plenty of WD and maybe a bit of heat as well. But there we go, bumper off. So you can see in my balance. I'm going to go and put this in my bedroom. Well, I must say, the screws to this front balance are very awkward to get to, and I have no idea how I did it all those years ago, because I think this was probably fitted around 2013, so yeah, about, about 11 years ago or so. Um, I don't know how I did it, because the screws are buried under this oil cooler, and I don't remember ever removing the oil cooler. I must have really struggled. <laughs> and the screws don't look all too healthy now. Uh, I'll show you them. Hang on. So I got that one out, easy. That one's loose, that's fine. But there's one in here, under that leaf. And there's one in there. And you can see where the oil cooler is bent, where I've obviously forced the screwdriver in. That one, again, that's awkward because that's in the way. Uh, I've got that one out. So really, I need to get this oil cooler out before the valance because I can't really get to it easily. Gosh, I don't think I have to remove these. They're the support bars for that. Um, God, it's all a bit wobbly and flexy, isn't it? <laughs> Looks like... It's probably a nut and bolt in there, nut and bolt up there. Okay, and then that'll move out the way. Undoing the pipes are going to be interesting. Okay, let's just do it. Oh! <laughs> I must have had this out before. That's coming undone with my fingers. Where? Finger licking good. Although I wouldn't lick these fingers. I don't know where they've been. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, look. There's copper grease on those. I've obviously had them out before, for whatever reason, whether I had them out to paint this front panel. But that looks painted. So hmm. Or I had had it out to do those screws, because I can't see how I would have got that one without taking the oil cooler out of the way. So, right, let's put them in. I'm running out of containers. Let's put them in with the bumper bolts because we know the bumper bolts are huge. <laughs> Brilliant. I have already loosened that one off with a spanner before you came out. Oh my, oh I'm so sorry. I know some of you really don't like that. I just can't help it. It's a, it's a disease. Well, not a disease, but... Oh, I wonder if I can get the ratchet spanner in there. Oh, can I? Oh no, it'll get stuck. Oh gosh, you really can't get much on that. Oh, I think the nuts turning underneath. Okay, not so lucky with the bottom nuts and bolts, but the top ones, they've gone. That's cool. Okay, I'm going to put my music back on now, and I'll get stuck in and get these uh, bolts out. <laughs> oh, I had to give up with the bottom nuts and bolts for a minute, because my back was hurting. It's sort of catch-22. You can't get the balance off without the oil cooler out of the way. And you can't get to the nut to get the oil cooler off with the valance in the way. So I have to lean right over, hunched over, which is not good for my back. So I've given myself a break. And I thought I'll just see if this um, nut comes undone. I don't know if you can see, but I, um, I hardly touched the thing. It's come undone, but it's also snapped. So look at that. You can see the fluid just starting to leak out. All I did was, you know, put a bit of pressure on these and the pipe just went kink and it's uh 
it's broken it it's leaking so i'm really glad i have got a replacement one of these because that is knackered i turn my back for one minute and mr jenkins has made a mess he's bleeding he's bleeding and he's got on the blooming cushion Do you mind? I didn't expect all that to come out. It's still dripping now, little bugger. <laughs> uh, what was I going to show you? Oh yeah, yeah. Hang on, let's get you up here. Yeah, so these bolts uh, are not happy. I used a bit of heat and I managed to get them to turn. So they're loose. Uh, but they're really not wanting to come undone and it's really awkward and it's hurting my back so I've decided I'm going to cut them off now I can't really cut that one off because the disc is going to be cutting this head of the screw so I found this nifty little tool in my uh, little tool kit over there that my mum got me and I'm just gently undoing that and it is undoing happy days just got to be careful with it <laughs> so yeah I'll undo that screw out the way and then I've got my grinder where is it there it is with no protection on because I'm just going to whip these off get the disc in there under the head and hopefully cut them off I'll just put new ones in stainless ones mm. not that I'll ever have to get that out again I hope uh, what else? Anything else? Anything else? Well, that's it so far. Just want to get this blimmin' thing off. Oh, just while we're here, these rubbers, they're knackered. I've got a load of them kicking about. New old stock. So, I think that'll end up in the bin. These are always awkward because you, you've got to get it round the bend. Uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't think that worked. <laughs> All it did was cut through the side of the oil cooler. <laughs> oh dear, how am I going to get that out of there? Hold up. Wait a minute. I think it has actually cut through it. It has. Yay! Yes! God for that. Well, that's good. We have movement. So we need one more to go now. I'm going to try heating this one up. Hope ATF is not flammable. We'll find out in a minute. Smoking, so will it help it undo? I'll try not to burn my fingers off. It's already loose. Just need to get it undone. Oh, it's moving. I need to lie down now. And the interesting thing is, is you can't get the bolt out because the oil cooler's in the way. And you can't get the oil cooler out because the bolt's in the way. So what the hell? This thing might have to be moved. Really? That's ridiculous. Ah, that was awkward though, I've got to admit. That hole was directly under that. When I do it, I'm putting stainless in and I'm going from the bottom and put the nut on the top. 
because that's just rubbish. Um, right, is this thing going to come out of here now? I'm not even convinced that it is, you know. Oh, yeah, it will. Hang on. Uh, yeah, that's rubbish, that. So, where's my bin? Over there! I missed. Uh, yeah, let's get this out. Oh, my goodness. It just popped out. I've only got one hand on it, and it's quite heavy. <laughs> Pop you there. Back on your little plinths. Back on your legs. I had to have a little lie down just now because of my back. Mm. There she is. Look at that. Snap. <laughs> I am so glad I changed that. I was always worried it was going to start leaking when I was out on the road. State of it. Oof. Okay, so now we can get this blimmin' balance off. Pardon me. Where's my screwdriver? It's gone. There it is. So we can continue. I'm doing these. Little screws. And this ratchet screwdriver is awful. It is quite literally rat shit <laughs> make it slippy I have got a better one I just thought I'd use this because it was to hand there we go that's it that's the last two so the valance should come off need some KY that'll get them off make it slippery it's coming. It's off camera, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just pulling this bad boy off. Oh, it's still got some life in it, but not a lot of life. So, uh, oh no. Oh, what is going on today? Look. Flip's sake. Oh. Jenkins is determined on making a mess of this place. Well, for God's sake, it's like I've murdered somebody. Well, technically, I haven't. I have murdered Mr. Jenkins. Oh, Let that dry, and hopefully, that will uh, go away. You should come off. Ah. <sighs> it won't come off. Because. Because of the blooming bumper irons. I forgot about that. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, for God's sake. And it's quite handy actually, because I could do with this one coming off. I think there's a bit of welding behind there. But I've got a feeling both have got to come off. Ugh. Well, that's a pain in the backside. Well, I feel very lucky and privileged that this long bolt actually came undone really easily. So this bracket is now free. I guess when you're fitting the new valance, you've got to be really careful not to scratch it when you put this in. You can clean that up. There's a few things we need to clean up now. This is a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be. So, can we get this off now? With just the one iron off. Or have we got to take both ends off? Probably both ends. Yeah. We can't do it. I could force it off, but there's no point in that because we're not going to be forcing the new one on, are we? We're going to put that on delicately. Okay. 
fine. Let's get rid of this. Let's move you. Well, fingers crossed, that side comes undone as easy as this side. I'd just like to report. But no, this side is not easy. <laughs> The socket doesn't fit over the nut very well and it's not undoing at all. <laughs> so I'm going to try and set fire to it. Seems my new party trick setting fire to things. Um, and we'll try again. I'm sorry but that bowl is not coming undone. And because I don't care, twang about this balance. I have forced it off. Ta-da! Look, you can see the original colour. It's a con blue. Oh, so this is his original valance. Bless him. But I've got a new old stock one of these valances in, uh, in storage. So I think this can just go out for the scrap man. Doesn't he look weird without, <laughs> without his front panel on? When you look at it and you think, if this had a head-on collision, all there is is these two flimsy bars there. But I suppose, you know, the bumpers there with these irons and they're bolted straight, you know, into the chassis or the, the base unit. You can see these bumper irons go right up in there into the base unit tucked away. And see where the horns are located so you'll have a high and a low tone they look crusty but they work um yeah this is this is a troublemaker it doesn't want to come undone so i'm just going to cut it it's quite interesting actually we can see here the panel that i welded on previously so that's good we can get to the back of that and try and clean it and protect it uh, and then this side's got a bit of welding that needs doing, I think. Not a great deal. It's up here. There's a hole. Ta-da! Now we can sort that out. And a bit here as well. As you can see, it's just falling into the ground. Um, but I thought there was more structure under here. Uh, I'm quite, kind of relieved actually there's not because it would probably need cleaning. Interesting this has got a dent either side. It's a very uniform dent as, as if it's meant to be there. I don't know if it's meant to be there. God that transmission fluid stinks. The light has got dirty. Uh, so yeah next is yeah I've got to get this off. I've got to cut it off. And put a new bolt, nut and bolt in there. Gross. Oh, sorry, you weren't here for that. Uh, but yes, I <laughs> have just cut the nut off. So the iron fell on the floor, and now we have the bolt. And as you can see, hidden behind the bumper iron, so it's a good thing we had taken this out, is a uh, is rot. More rot. Yay, more rot. Woohoo. It's okay. It's okay. The tube bump iron is still in there, okay. So, mm, yes, how are we going to do this? Well, we need to see how solid the rest of it is and go from there. I'm even looking at this thinking, should that have another plate on it? Mm, it certainly needs tidying up, but it's very tight in there. That's all okay. Oh yeah, that's a hole that's meant to be there. Forgot about that one. That's okay. Hmm. Okay. No biggie, no biggie. Um, what do I want to do first? Do I want to do that hole? I don't really want to get the welder out yet. I suppose I could clean it and assess it. Um, there's a bit here 
I need to clean that up a bit really. God, look at my hands. Disgusting. Um, yeah, I want to see about getting the headlights out and stuff. There's no rot in there. I just want to give them a bit of a clean. Oh, it's like, oh, where do I stop? I was going to sand down the block as well for that, um, that engine plate. What does my back want to do? That's the question. My back's quite happy sat here. So I think I'll clean this up. 